I am Sifu Funky Monkey. Welcome to my Dojo of Love. Now from this introduction, you can gather one of two things. Firstly, that I have finally found a martial arts film outside of the Kung Fu Panda franchise to talk about. Or secondly, that I am, in fact, as predictable as the Silver Stream. Well, my students, I will save you the speculation and reveal that it is the latter. And yes, today's subject is indeed Kung Fu Panda 3. <laughs> Released in January 2016, Kung Fu Panda 3 continues the adventures of the Dragon Warrior and the Furious Five. The next stage of Poe's journey to legend is to pass on what he has learned, but he'll have to deal with a threat from beyond the mortal plane first. Along the way, he discovers that he's not the last panda, and helps rediscover a secret that they themselves have forgotten. Receiving generally positive reviews, and enjoying an 87% certified fresh status on movie review aggregate site Rotten Tomatoes, it would seem to be another chop socky classic from the DreamWorks stable. But, as ever, the question remains of whether or not this film will pass muster with this master. And there is only one way to find out. So come with me, students of Kung Fu Legend, as we return once more to the Valley of Peace, for an unprecedented third helping of martial arts mayhem with a spiritual side order in the Chinese chop socky chowder that is Kung Fu Panda 3. We open in the spirit realm, where Grandmaster Ugwe is unceremoniously attacked by Kai, the ancient warlord. And shockingly, Kai is victorious. They're not messing around this time. They're showing us precisely how dangerous our antagonist is from the off. While back in the mortal world, it is Master Shifu's final class. Now the Dragon Warrior must lead the training. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. But Master Shifu still has wise words for our hero. So then, enter Kai. Of course. 500 years is a long time in the mortal world. Even longer given that we're talking about anthropomorphic animals. And the legend of General Kai has long since been forgotten. All of which leads us to another House of Love top tip. Revenge may be a dish best served cold, but 500 year old extreme aged revenge is very much an acquired taste. Back in the valley, we discover... Another panda? Now, my students, permit me to introduce to you one Li Shan, the biological father of Poe. For you see, the fates sent a vision of his lost son to Li, prompting him to leave his secret mountain hideaway and head to the Valley of Peace. Father and son bond over the exhibits in the Jade Temple. But family bonding time is short-lived, as Kai's forces attack. Now, the Jade Warriors that Kai employs are actually representations of old Kung Fu Masters. For you see, over the centuries that Kai has spent in the Spirit Realm, he has captured the chi of all the Kung Fu Masters who ever lived, and now, in the Mortal Realm, he seeks to complete his collection. Our heroes repel the jade puppets of this dark master, only to discover the horrible truth. Now, my students, come hear the sad, sad tale of Ugwe the Wise. For you see, 500 years ago, Grand Master Ugwe was an ambitious young warrior, alongside a promising oxen general. Kai, his closest friend. One day, Ugwe's army was ambushed, and Ugwe was badly injured. It was Kai, you see, that would travel many days to find any kind of healing for his friend. 
it was in this desperate search that Kai came upon a secret village in the mountains, hidden from the world and tended by panda monks. And so Ugwe learned to give his chi to the trees and to others. However, Kai reasoned that if chi could be given, that it could also be taken. It was this dark desire that put the two friends into conflict, and it was Ugwe that would win this battle, banishing Kai into the spirit realm, where he remained for 500 years. And now that he is returned, he can only be defeated by a true master of chi. In order to learn the secrets of Panda Chi, Po must journey to the mountain village of the pandas. Where he learns what it really means to be a panda. Essentially being laid back, napping, eating, chilling out, rolling around the place. You know, living in the now. And Li Shan tells his son, and by extension the audience, all about Po's mum. But Kai's rampage has reached the Jade Temple. And a Furious Three, even with Master Shifu's help, are no match for him. Yes! Three. Crane and Mantis were tasked with reconnaissance on Kai, and given strict orders not to intervene. They intervened. Kung Fu Masters, eh? And while Tigris survives to deliver the bad news... The plain truth is, Li Shan doesn't know the secrets of Panda Chi. But the Dragon Warrior doesn't shy from a fight. And Po begins shaping the Panda Village into a fighting force. And so the moment of truth arrives at last. The village distracts Kai's projections. Leaving the Dragon Warrior all the opening he needs. Skadoosh! Okay, so this is kind of the controversial bit. See, the Wuxi Fingerhold, which sends someone to the spirit realm, only works on mortals. And since Kai spent 500 years in the spirit realm, he's no longer considered mortal. But it does still affect Poe. Not that it would help, if he were alone. Luckily, Li Shan has relearned the ancient secret, which empowers the Dragon Warrior. Get ready to feel the thunder! To put Kai down! <laughs> and after that, and a short chat with Grandmaster Ugwe, our movie ends with Poe embracing his fathers and becoming the next great master of Kung Fu. So that was Kung Fu Panda 3, and it would take no meditation at all to see that this one is worthy of my house of love. This is another triumphant chapter in the Legend of the Dragon Warrior. Another villain with unbalanced lust for power dispatched. Another lesson learned about balance and self. And plenty of laughs along the way. And while it is a family film, it's chop socky awesome for the eyes and ears. But let's start with the performances. And across all three films, Jack Black has been an absolute delight as the Kung Fu Ascended fanboy turned Dragon Warrior. Alongside the Furious Five, Seth Rogen's Mantis, the voice of reason in Angelina Jolie's Tigress, martial artist legend Jackie Chan's Monkey, Lucy Liu's criminally underused Viper, and David Cross's Crane, an ensemble cast the equal of any this decade. Plus, of course, Dustin Hoffman's Master Shifu, who turned in a driven performance in one, even if he's reduced to snarky cameos in two and three. And we have to mention the villains, much as their drives were all similar. Ian McShane's Tai Lung from 1, Gary Oldman's Lord Shen from 2, and here in 3, J.K. Simmons voices the Oxen General Kai. All with one thing in common, they all wanted something they believed was stolen from them. Tai Lung, the Dragon Scroll, Shen, the rule of China with the power of gunpowder. And Kai? 
the chi of the pandas that he may... Well, actually, I don't think this was really specified above the rule of China again. But yeah, they all turned in great performances. Back to three. And the flow of this movie is smooth, if not too quick, even at a slender 80 minutes, plus credits. There's a good 20 minutes in the middle devoted entirely to character development, which is no bad thing, as after all, a movie that is entirely plot can be tiring. The animation, the hyperfluid action that has made this series rightly famous, is still abundant, as there are plenty of fight scenes. And I've always somewhat identified with the design of Poe, a big fat panda fanboy who got his chance to live the dream, even if his destiny wasn't entirely his own. Overall then, while the threat of selfish villains is a little bit frightening, everybody is kung fu fighting for a movie, and indeed an entire franchise, which shows us that what we enjoy, and who we are, is powerful indeed. And there's only one word to describe that feeling. Skadoosh! I have been your instructor, Sifu Funky Monkey, and with these words, I wish you good days, great entertainment, and all of the noodly goodness that you can eat. Jama Jola, Ho Jimen.